Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wei Guangguan. Uh, I'm a ShockNet staff at McMaster University. So uh, today's topic uh, is actually uh, using multiple GPU uh, uh, in machine learning. Uh, but I use slides that I gave a talk. Actually, in July, I gave a three-hour uh, talk uh, at Next AI. So I'm going. I'm going to use the same slides uh, for today, but uh, I need to cut certain parts to fit into the one-hour uh, limit of this seminar. So, uh, so now we only have one goal to focus: using multiple GPU on a single node. Okay. And uh, we will start with a brief uh, overview of a distributed parallelism in neural network training. Then we will start with a simple uh, example. And I will use uh, handwritten digital recognition as a, the example to show how to write a regular uh, neural network code. And then we convert that code into a uh, multi-GPU uh, uh, version. So uh, I hope the, with this, you can uh, understand how to do this. And also, I do some benchmark. And I will, based on the benchmarks, we can see that it's not always beneficial to use a multiple GPU. I will give some guideline to, uh, to uh, when and we will benefit from using uh, multiple GPU. Given a specific uh, uh, problem or task, if, it, if uh, it can be solved by machine learning, and I think the first step is, uh, is for the developer to design and create a neural network architecture. A neural network actually uh, consists of a lot of uh, parameters. And uh, the value of those parameters at the, in the initial state are random numbers. So of, with, without uh, training, uh, the neural network will not produce a meaningful output. So in order to, uh, to make it uh, to produce a desired uh, output for a given uh, input, we need to uh, tune the parameters. So here I will show the uh, uh, the, 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 the diagram to il illustrate how we can achieve this. Suppose uh, you have a single sample, you feed into the model. Uh, the model, actually, I, I, I refer just as the neural network. And the calculations start from the uh, uh, input layer, layer by layer, layer by layer, until it reached uh, the uh, output layer. So on the way, just a lot of calculation depends on the nature of those layers uh, in between. Could be convolutional, could be uh, you know just a dense layer, and so on and so forth. But once you got the output, you need uh, you will compare the uh, the output with the ground truth of that sample. Uh, Normally, you you won't be so lucky, uh, you know, to see they are uh, they agree to each other. You be, you you will see a big difference, and uh, we measure the difference uh, using predefined so-called loss function. At this point, as uh, another process starts, this time it's a back. Uh, words from the uh, uh, output layer back towards the uh, input layer, layer by layer as well. This process called uh, uh, back propagation. Along the process, we calculate the gradients for the parameters along the way. Okay. So when this is uh, completed, we got the uh, gradients. Uh, we call it uh, NAPLA P. Then we apply the gradient to the parameter. 
uh, actually just uh, you know update the parameter along the uh, gradient direction to minimize the loss, right? And uh, the, 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 uh, how much we update depends on the learning rate. Okay, those just uh, this is just uh, some detail. So you, uh, you you got to update the parameter. So this is just one step of uh, training. And uh, in practice, instead of uh, using a single sample, we actually fit in the model with a batch of samples, and we calculate a collective uh, you know collective uh, gradients, which can be considered as uh, an uh, average of uh, gradients that is calculated from each of the samples uh, in the batch, okay? Then we do the update and uh, so on and so forth. We need to do this uh, over and over again. So neural, net neural network training is actually an iterative process where uh, you do the, 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 the update, uh, you know, repeatedly by feeding different batch of data. So uh, so this is how it works. You can see the uh, time consuming part is basically how to calculate the back propagation or in other words, how to calculate the gradients. So we need to do this, uh, you know, uh, in some ways. There actually, there are two different uh, parallelisms. One is called the data parallelism. Suppose you, uh, your batch size is 100, and you have four devices. So here I always use a device. It could be a, a CPU core, it could be a GPU. So suppose you have four GPU, you want to run, uh, you want to use the four GPUs. So you divided the 100 uh, samples into four chunks. So each has 25 uh, samples. So, uh, so that means each GPU only need to work on 25 samples to calculate a collective gradient. Once we got uh, four sets of gradients, uh, we uh, do the averaging and then apply the final average the gradient to update the parameter. So this is called a data parallelism. We can also do it another way which basically we divided our model or the graph, you know, neural network can be described uh, as a, a directed graph. So for example, we can uh, assign um, um, the first, uh, the calculation of the first 10 layers to uh, uh, device one and the next 10 uh, layer to device two, uh, so on and so forth. So we, uh, in this way, we distributed the calculation among multiple devices. But uh, under the model parallelism uh, category, uh, you have to deal with uh, load balance because uh, the neural network is not, uh, you know, quite uniform. Some layers contains, you know, convolution layer, uh, which uh, the calculation on it is uh, more expensive than uh, dense layer, so on and so forth. Also the size of the layer, so on and so forth. So we will focus on data parallelism. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, parameter updating scheme, we can further divide it, uh, the, it into synchronized and asynchronized uh, parallelisms. In synchronized, uh, synchronous uh, parallelism, uh, basically uh, here I just saw example, you have four, three devices. You ca uh, uh, each device received uh, uh, one third of a chunk of the, uh, the original batch. And then they do the calculation, one, one probably, uh, for, for example, the calculation on the device A is faster than the rest, but it, it has to wait there until all the three uh, uh, calculations are completed. Then you do the averaging and then update, and, but uh, the asynchronized uh, is not like that. So each one calculates their own uh, uh, gradient, 
once it uh, becomes available, it updates the parameter immediately. And this is, uh, you know, um, uh, it works, uh, of course, but it's just a kind of, uh, you know, uh, there's some uh, delay among different uh, processes, but uh, it works. Uh, today, uh, when I talk about uh, the different uh, strategies using uh, multiple GPUs, I use uh, TensorFlow as the machine learning library. And uh, TensorFlow has already uh, established some kind of uh, you know, predefined uh, strategies. Uh, under the synchronized uh, parallelism, they are you know, mirror mirrored or central storage or multi-work mirrored and the TPU uh, plus probably there are a fifth one, but uh, I'm, today I'm only focused on the first one the mirrored strategy, because uh, it is the simplest one and easy to understand. So uh, under the mirrored strategy, how it works, we basically <coughs> uh, replicate uh, the model and uh, deploy them on each device. And for uh, in each uh, iteration, we divided the batch data into quite equally, uh, you know, uh, equal sized chunk and feed each chunk into each device. And so each device actually do the calculation and got the gradient. And once we got the gradient, we uh, uh, take the average, then update the uh, the parameters, I use variables, I always use different terms, but uh, I mean parameters, those updated parameters will be fit, will, will be used to update those models. And uh, then we can uh, start the next, uh, uh, run, next iteration. We can do it over and over in this way. All right, another one is central storage. Basically, uh, it's similar to the, uh, the previous one, but we only keep one model instead of uh, making uh, multiple replications. The model uh, sits on the, uh, uh, the, the main memory, and, but the rest is basically the same idea. And we won't talk about the uh, parameter uh, server strategy because it's more complicated. And the choice you have so far, uh, I, I would suggest uh, if uh, no other specific reason, you use one of the predefined uh, strategies. But if you are an expert <coughs> and you have a good reason to customize your parallelism, you can do in this way, you can use uh, with uh, tf dot device and give the device name, for example, GPU zero. Under the scope, you have some code here that will run on GPU zero, and you can also use the grammar for the other GPU one, GPU two, and it's quite customized. And uh, in the code uh, later on, I will let you to download. Uh, I have all the code are either customized or user predefined, okay? And next, I'm going to focus on the, the mirrored strategy. I will do different uh, benchmark. Uh, like I said earlier, I use TensorFlow. I use 1.13 to do the benchmark. The uh, task is uh, recognition of handwritten digits, and I use the MNIST uh, dataset, which is quite uh, typical, you know, this is a very typical, uh, you know, example in machine learning. So I'm going to use this one to illustrate how to uh, write a regular uh, machine learning code and also how to convert it to multiple GPU version. Here's the overview of the architecture. So basically you start 
from convolutional layer then relu pulling and again convolution relu pulling after that you have a dense layer and relu again and have, sorry drop out and finally another dense layer and you know you can use a uh, tensorflow in different way you can use the low level API if you really are expert you can also use the high level you know keras interface or the estimator interface so i'm today i'm going to you demonstrate the how I use the keras and estimator, those high level uh, interfaces. But uh, in the code that you can, uh, I will let you download later to use, uh, to use them, uh, include the low level as well, okay? Okay, so now let's go to the, uh, the code. All right. So here you can see that I have a bunch of code. So this one is the, uh, the regular uh, neural network for uh, this head written disk recognition uh, using the low level. And this one is the corresponding multi GPU version. This is the regular uh, Keras uh, version of uh, you know, uh, method, and uh, this is a corresponding multiple GPU. <coughs> and this one is the regular version using estimator. Oh, sorry, sorry. This one is the regular version of using that. And this one is the multi GPU version. And I find it's a little different <coughs> between the 1.13 and 2.0. By the way, uh, at the time I did the, uh, uh, the experiment, that was uh, July, at that time uh, 2.0 wasn't uh, stable. Uh, it was just a beta version, but uh, nowadays it's much better. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, the regular version using Keras. Uh, interface. Let's take a look of the code. I'm assuming you have some kind of knowledge of, uh, you know, using TensorFlow <coughs> and Keras. So here, uh, the first part is in, uh, import this, uh, import something that I need. Uh, this part, I define some global uh, parameters for, uh, for for the training, like a learning rate, batch size, how many iterations that I want to carry out, the filter size of the uh, convolutional layer, the number of filters, <coughs> and the dense layer size, and the number of class. Because here, uh, the number of class, you know, is 10, because uh, this is a digit recognition. It's uh, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 9. So we have only 10 possibilities. So it's a classification of 10 classes. All right, so then I calculated the uh, estimate, how much uh, applicants from the number of steps. The number of steps is uh, 20,000. And I know the, uh, the training set contains a sitting uh, uh, 16, uh, uh, sorry, 60,000 uh, samples divided by size. I know how many batches I need to go through to complete uh, epoch, okay? So something like that. And after that, I have some definition here because the, <coughs> the raw image is uh, 24 by 24 grayscale image, so it's 24 by 24. And uh, I use uh, this amnist function, load data, to load the uh, train and the label. Uh, the, the train part, the X part is the image. The Y part is the label, okay? So then I check the data format if the uh, 
it will, it want to be channel first or <coughs> or channel last. If channel first, I put the the channel here is the channel row and column. Otherwise, it's a row, column, and the channel because the grayscale <coughs> is not a color image. It's only one channel there. Okay. Afterwards, uh, I do this. Um, yeah. Why I do this? Because originally its grayscale is from zero to two point. Uh, to, sorry, the, the value of each pixel it ranges from zero to uh, 255. So by dividing by uh, 255, I actually convert uh, map the value to zero between zero and one. Okay, uh, nothing special here. Also, I <coughs> converted the label both for training and testing into categorical type. So I use a care care utility to do this. And up to this point, I'm ready to define the architecture of the neural network in Keras. So in Keras, it's quite straightforward. So basically, I say, OK, this uh, I want to build the neural network sequentially. The first layer I add a convolutional layer. <laughs> Give it the parameter here. Then it's pulling and another layer. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, inside the uh, convolution layer, I already specified the uh, reload there. So it's combination of uh, convolution and the reload already. Then it's pulling, it's maximum pulling. Then convolution and pulling again. Then I do the uh, dance uh, layer. <coughs> Before I do the dance layer, I need to flight the the output from previous layer to a one a long vector. Okay, I do the flatten, and then I do the dance layer uh, uh, drop out dance layer again. After that. Uh, I'm almost ready. Here I need to specify. So up to this point, I complete the complete the uh, specification of the architecture. But uh, I, in order to train this neural network, I need to specify what's the loss function. So I use the model compile specify the mod, uh, the, the loss function to cross entropy, uh, so on and so forth. I specify the uh, optimizer using Adam uh, optimizer. There's <coughs> also so-called uh, uh, what what so-called a uh, stochastic uh, gradient descent. There's a bunch of other optimizers, but here I use Adam. Okay, and after that, I just call motor feed. To start the training process, so in I need to specify the the training data, uh, how what's the batch size, and how long I'm gonna uh, to train the the number of apps. <coughs> That's all. So after that, I do a timing. Basically, uh, I just want to check this major part between this how long it takes. I print out the time. So later on, I can check. Okay, once it's ready, the, the training is done. I check uh, <coughs> the, the performance by running the model on the uh, test data to see the score, and I print out the, <coughs> the score in terms of uh, loss and uh, accuracy. Accuracy is more understandable in terms of uh, percentage. Okay, so that's the regular. Uh, version of a neural network code for uh, for the, uh, the digit recognition problem using the CARES interface. Uh, I before I move on, I will say that uh, um, with this uh, regular uh, version, uh, it 
it can automatically detect uh, uh, multiple CPUs that are available to you. If it depends more uh, CPU cores, for example, if it detect, uh, detect the 16 uh, CPU cores, it will use the uh, 16 CPU cores uh, uh, without, uh, you know, uh, any uh, explicit uh, specification. It will automatically use them in a multi-thread uh, way. But if it, uh, there's are <coughs> more than one GPU available, it will use only one GPU. So that's the, the, the uh, that's why we need to uh, convert to multiple GPU if we want to use multiple GPU. So, uh, so okay, so we have a version already. And uh, before we move on to take a look of how to uh, implement our regular version through the uh, estimator uh, interface, because uh, it's quite similar, but uh, but I, I I don't want to uh, create the complexity. But uh, let's take a quick look at what we can achieve so far. Okay. So here is uh, the the. The benchmark that I want, I run without uh, any GPU. I just use CPUs. <coughs> I uh, fix the task load, which uh, by de uh, defining the batch size and uh, how many iterations I'm going to run. And I want to see uh, uh, which one takes uh, less time, you know, uh, in terms of using different number of CPUs. You can see. <coughs> Uh, if I use uh, only one CPU core, it takes uh, the longest time. Then two CPU, four CPU, each time we, I double the number of CPUs, you see the number decreasing. The only exception is the last one, when I use, uh, uh, you know, 32 CPU cores. I will uh, explain it, this later why it happened, but so far, uh, at least uh, it makes sense. You see the data, uh, you, you know, <coughs> you see the timing descending as we increase the number of CPUs. But uh, why the the time isn't, you know, reduced by half when we double the number of CPU? Because uh, there is overhead. Uh, whenever you have a multiple uh, threads or mod using multiple uh, device, uh, you need to coordinate the task and you need to, you know, distribute, distribute the task and you then, uh, you want, you need to collect the gradient averaging them and those are the overheads. So you ideally, if without any uh, overhead, if the overhead was zero, you, of course, you would see uh, uh, you know, the, the time will be just reduced by half, but it's not like that, okay? Then I I see, you see here, it's not divided, uh, the, the, the time is, is not reduced by half, but not even close. And also I wonder why the last one reversed. So my assumption is like this, because the, architecture that we use in this uh, experiment is relatively uh, small. It's a relatively small uh, neural network. <laughs> Normally uh, in a real application, for example, in uh, image recognition, uh, the, uh, you know, it could have hundreds, even thousand layers. But here we only have a, a, a very small number of layers. So, so for this uh, uh, small uh, neural network, uh, computation uh, uh, load uh, on each CPU is uh, not very large. So the overhead versus the, the computing uh, uh, needs, you know, the overhead is, uh, is, 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 is higher. So, if this assumption is correct, if we somehow uh, increase the, 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 the compute load 
by either increase the, uh, the complexity of the architecture by adding more layers, or we can simply increase the batch size to increase the, <coughs> the load because uh, here increase uh, the, the number uh, changing the architecture is more you know complicated. So I took the simple way. So I increased the batch size from 50 to 56. Now you see the situation is a little better. Unless, at least you don't see the reverse for the last uh, the 32 case, right? So it's just an experiment, okay? And now let I also run the regular, uh, you know, uh, version using GPU because by if you <coughs> Uh, when you use uh, S sub uh, to you write your JavaScript or ask for GPU, you can get a GPU. Uh, I tested it on Pascal 100. I got a number. I have a three version. The low level API is the class and uh, and also the S meter. I, the number are kind of different. I don't. I wonder why, but. Uh, but roughly, you, the GPU version takes uh, <coughs> is about 15 times faster than the than the using 16 CPU core. You know, we have a, a, a average of like 150 something seconds using uh, one GPU. Let's go back. So if you use 16. You have a, a 2,500 seconds. So when we fix them, you know it takes a much longer time. Okay. And I also did a test, uh, you know, using different uh, GPU. I compared the Pascal 100 with a more advanced <laughs> GPU called Volta 100. I can I observed a little bit better performance. You know, for the low level, I see a decrease from 157 to 103. For others, uh, class, I didn't offer too much. S meter, uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, I should point out that because I should do the timing, you know, <coughs> I should do the experiment uh, each one, each case, I re should repeat it, uh, you know, five or five times and do the <laughs> averaging. But uh, I didn't have the chance to to do it. But uh, basically, this number just a ballpark figure to to give you a sense uh, how uh, each uh, you know the, the, the GPU versus CPU and also different CPU was the performance. Just give you a ballpark figure, okay? Uh, now the the next question probably is you can see that uh, GPU is mu much more powerful than CPU, but how about if you we use uh, multiple GPU instead of single GPU? Can we gain from that? And uh, <coughs> that's something that we will do next. So first we need to convert our regular. Uh, Version of uh, you know neural network code into the uh, uh, multi GPU version. So let's take a quick look how to do that. So uh, I will do it on this slide. Uh, let's first let me take a quick look. So today probably I don't we don't have time to take a look of the S meter, but. Uh, Let's just focus on the the, the Keras, uh, version. So take a look at the multi GPU version. If you do the comparison, so on the right side I show the regular version. On the right hand side I show the uh, multiple GPU version. You see quite similar, a lot of inputs and the global parameters, and uh, the only thing. Difference uh, is up to here. Okay, so let's see on this side. Okay, here. So 
So up to this point, we get the data ID for the training and testing, right? For the regular version, we automatically started, uh, you know, defining defining the uh, the architecture. <laughs> but here, before we define the uh, architecture, we first uh, create an object called a mirror strategy by using TensorFlow TF dot distribute mirror strategy. We, so this is a mirror strategy. Then uh, you don't have to specify the uh, the the CPU, the GPUs. By default, it will pick up the, all the GPU available that uh, to your uh, uh, to your pro process. And then you use this uh, scope. So under this uh, uh, mirror strategy, you started to construct your neural network. Okay. So this the following part is exactly the same as we defined here. Okay. So I don't need to, uh, uh, you know, repeat. The rest is just the same, okay? It's the exact, so the only different part is this. Then there's a indent, you know, because uh, you, if you know Python, Python have, if you, you want to specify those things under this scope, you have used the equals uh, in indentation, right? It's exactly the same thing here. All right, so this is the code. So let's run it and see uh, what we get here. So uh, let's take the Keras one. Exactly the same thing. Uh, I, run, I use batch size 256. I run iteration 20,000 iterations. Exactly the same data, but now I'm using one GPU, two GPUs, four, six, eight, and I can see the difference. So because okay, uh, uh, here uh, I, I need to specify because on I did the experiment on Gram, and Gram has a regular uh, GPU uh, node, which has uh, two GPUs. So <coughs> we could have got, uh, we ha also have seven so-called uh, uh, AI nodes, each has uh, eight GPUs. So we did the, the graph here. I showed the uh, the result that uh, uh, running on the uh, AI node. Okay, so we can see that with multiple GPU, instead of uh, decreasing, the time increased, it's getting worse. So I was shocked and uh, surprised when I first uh, observed the, the, this phenomenon. I couldn't understand why. With more GPU, I, uh, I thought I could get, uh, you know, less, I need a, a less running time, but now just the opposite. What happened? Now well, something is like this. Okay, I also did uh, the experiment using the estimator. I observed the similar uh, phenomena, although it's a little different, but similar. So first of all, the answer is no, not always, but why? So my assumption is like this. Because the, uh, the, the neural network uh, in this experiment is relatively small, uh, it's far below the capacity of one GPU. So I want to make an analogy. For example, if you uh, need to move a big table, probably uh, uh, it's very hard for one person to do the job. So you probably you ask one of your friends to move the table with you. Okay, so it's more efficient, right? But uh, consider Another scenario, suppose uh, you carry a laptop, very, very, very light, maybe just uh, one kilogram or two kilograms. And, but instead of you carry it alone, you ask uh, uh, nine friends to carry it together, you will see it's so very awkward, you know. Uh, you know, 10 people carrying 
one laptop actually is less efficient uh, than one person carrying it alone. So this is just exactly the same situation here. So the uh, the one GPU is is can easily handle the new new network without uh, you know any uh, difficulty at all. Still, you know, only use maybe. 10% uh, of its capacity, but now you ask a two or um, four and eight GPU, it won't help, but it just do the opposite. So that's the case. So let's do, let's have to prove this is the case. This is just my hypothesis, okay. So like I said, I can either increase the scale, but now I choose to increase the batch size to see if, if I can observe something different. So now I, Increase the batch size to 2,000 something and 8,000 something, and one is in blue, the other is in red. You can see at least uh, with the increasing uh, of the number of GPUs uh, used in uh, in the experiment, at least I see a kind of decreasing, not obvious increasing, so that some kind of proved my theory, okay? And I did the same experiment with uh, the estimator uh, interface. I observed a similar result, okay? And that's uh, a kind of proof my uh, assumption. So here uh, I want to make a conclusion that uh, you know, it's not always uh, ben uh, we, we, uh, beneficial to use multiple GPU. It all depends on the, uh, the the scale of your uh, neural network. If it's very very large and you have uh, you want to train it over with a, a large training data, sure, uh, using multiple GPU will benefit. But then the next question you may ask is. is uh, how large uh, I, uh, the network is, uh, then I need to use multiple GPU. If I need to use multiple GPU, should I use two or four or eight or what's the number? Uh, I should say there's no, uh, you know, uh, a rule or some kind of, but uh, you need to determine those numbers based on experiment. So you have to test it uh, with, for example, try, one GPU, then you try two GPUs. If you see some gain, if you would like, you can try three or four until you see, okay, using multiple GPU won't benefit the uh, future uh, anymore. Uh, you can decide it, uh, where you stop, okay? And I also did another test, uh, you know, uh, under the uh, TensorFlow has, uh, you know, has a so-called uh, benchmark uh, 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 folder in the GitHub. You can uh, uh, git clone, get the source code, run a benchmark using a predefined model like a VGG uh, 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 16 or ResNet uh, CT or ResNet 101 whatever model you want to run through the test uh, or using either one GPU or multiple GPU. Uh, I, here I just show some uh, example that uh, I run using ResNet. ResNet uh, uh, 50 is not very large, but it's certainly much larger than the, uh, the architecture that I showed you uh, early for the uh, digital recognition. So uh, you can see now my theory, uh, you know, holds, you know. I only use a batch size of 128, which is not very large. Once I hear the number is different, it's not uh, the time used for, because I didn't uh, fix the, the task by, you know, defining <coughs> the iteration. Here I, I want to check how many images or how many examples it can learn. So here I saw, I showed that with one GPU, I can learn 
345 uh, examples per second. These two, I got more, 500 something, then increasing. It's very good. At least it proves my theory. Let's see more. Okay, horror is something that I, uh, I don't have time to cover it here. Uh, it's uh, our, uh, another uh, toolkit built on upon uh, TensorFlow developed by uh, Uber uh, AI team. It actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, works very efficiently using multiple core and multiple GPUs. This is the benchmark that I using the uh, uh, Horror uh, uh, toolkit running the same network, uh, ResNet of 50. You can see uh, I can use mod because I can use multiple uh, nodes. I choose the last one. I think I use eight nodes, uh, and uh, because each node is has uh, eight uh, uh, GPUs, you see them scaled very very well. Why I say that? Because you see, using 16 uh, GPUs, you got almost double of the uh, throughput using eight GPUs, the same as uh, others. So every time you double the number of GPUs, you actually almost double the uh, performance. So it's really, really good. So the horror, uh, so that means the the horrible uh, libraries has very low uh, overhead. It's very good, but I don't have time to cover it. Today, I do not have, have time to cover the, uh, I, I only have the, the carers version. I don't have covered the estimator and also the low level version. But uh, if you are interested, uh, I will give you the links for you to download the code and the data, then you can experiment and uh, you can run them yourself. So let's just uh, give a quick summary of uh, of the talk. So we uh, introduced how to, uh, uh, you know, write a regular uh, machine learning code and we, Show I show you how to convert it to multiple GPU version. Remember, this is only <laughs> a one node, not a multiple uh, node. So it only can run one node, uh, then use the multiple GPU on that node, okay? And we also did the benchmark, like I said, we do not always benefit uh, from using multiple GPU. It all depends on the uh, on the scale of the of the problem or the, the how large of the new network you are using. So uh, okay, that's all, and I'm gonna stop here, and uh, I'm uh, going to answer your questions.